Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Running Lab, and welcome back to a new video. Now, in today's video, we've got a post bag that we're going to open, and that post bag should contain a number of other tiny post bags with various stuff inside of here that you will find very useful and interesting. So, let's get going and try to open the bigger bag first. With our trusty knife. Without damaging the smaller bags. Yeah, exactly as I thought. I need to mark a few packages off. So everything has been marked off. And let's go ahead and open a few post bags. Let's start with this one. I'll put this to the side. So let's start with this one, it's small. It doesn't really say what this is. Ah! Oh, nice and handy little box. If I can open it. So these are protective screen protector glasses for my camera, for my smartphone and they included two of these the, the one that's currently on the on the camera is has been on there for I think a year or three and it's full of scratches you can't actually see the scratches the photos that my phone takes are just very blurry and they look to be of low quality uh, low resolution I may say so, but that's not the case since it's a pretty good phone. So let's continue with this one. This feels like a box of some sort. Oh, oh no. I know what this is. Oh yeah. Finally. Now I've, uh, I'm actually charging 18650s uh, with my little solar panel. Uh, so that I can charge my phone during the night um, and then to, to use to discharge the 18650s I'm currently using the Litokala battery charger that also has a power bank mode uh, that you can use to actually uh, discharge the 18650s however the Litokala doesn't really discharge them completely I think it stops at around 3.4 volts or something which is well quite high um, so I don't really like it so I bought a yeah, basically a power bank shield that I can use to discharge the 18650s it provides a USB-C and a micro USB connection and a uh, regular USB type A connection. I think that this can yeah this can also be used to charge the phone. And I think these can be used to either discharge or charge. I think that this can be used to charge the, the, the batteries. And then this one can be used to do both. I'm not sure. And the PCB feels really, really nice. So, so yeah, there is some flux residue on here, here and there. But I think that the actual contacts have been soldered on well, good enough. I'm not planning to draw the full, uh, I don't know, 8 amps or something. So, yeah. Let's see, is there any LED on here? No, there is not. But the Oh, there, there is. So there are four status LEDs. So let's actually get some 18650s and try to charge my phone with it. So these are in parallel, which shouldn't really matter too much. Uh, so the positive side is on that side and the negative side is on the other side. So 
let's insert them into the casing there you go and the other one the only downside of this PCB is that the electronics are exposed at the bottom so there is a switch setting hold or normal I'm not sure what it does but ah there you go so you can I think you can test where the batteries are inserted or something or what the capacity is how do we to have all four batteries in there no we don't right so let's plug in the oh wait let's plug in my usb power meter so the power meter was hidden quite good it powers on and it charges my phone at Oh wow, 1.23 amps, that's quite some power actually, which is uh, really nice. Now I'm going to do a search for a type C to type C, but I'm not sure if I have one, so... No, I do not have a type C to type C, so we can only test if this is a yeah, this is a charger plug, a charger port, I assume. Which is okay. So but we can use it to test if this is a type C charger oh this is a type C input but it doesn't power from here so uh, yeah this is definitely a charger this allows me to hopefully bypass the limit of the Litokala USB charger um, the early cutoff uh, to yeah to charge my phone with solar power so I'm going to put this aside somewhere safe because it's all open. I don't want this thing to short out on anything. So up next is this rather strange looking item. It's strangely packed actually, so it makes me wonder what's inside of this thing. Oh, wow, look at how dark the bubble wrapping is. It also feels quite dirty, so... Blech. There you go, this is exactly what I needed, I'm out of jumper wires, I'm completely out of them. Well, I, I, you know, I need to harvest some from project that I've been, I've had laying around for too long, uh, if I want to use some, and yeah, I just needed these. So these are the long ones, I think the 40 centimeter ones. No, this is 20 centimeters. So, male to female, uh, female to female, and male to male. So, all three of them. Yeah, they look fine. They, they feel nice and sturdy. They, uh, yeah, so nothing more to add about, uh, about those. Let's continue with this one. Oh, this feels quite solid actually. I'm wondering what's inside of here. So let's open it up. Oh. DC, DC, 12 to 19 volts, 3 amp. Oh, this is the, the 19 amp regulator that I bought. The boost converter from 12 to 19 volts. Yeah. So. I'm going on a trip in a couple of weeks and I want to have my diagnostic system for the car with me so that if anything goes wrong I can fire up the laptop and see what's wrong and possibly even repair or reset the error 
if things are starting to misbehave. And it's quite an old laptop, it runs Windows XP. I know, I know Windows XP is the only operating system on which the diagnostic software runs. So it's offline, don't worry. But the uh, main disadvantage of Windows XP is that it isn't really that power efficient, or at least I'm, I'm thinking it isn't, because the laptop only survives for around an hour without recharging. Uh, so, I wanted to be able to recharge my laptop from my uh, cigarette lighter socket. So I bought this 12 volt to 19 volt DC to DC converter so that I can actually do that. And I think that 3, amp 3 amps is sufficient. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, solder this to the cigarette lighter plug and then uh, we'll be able to charge the laptop so let's continue with this one let's see where is the opening I think it's around here and I do know what's inside of this thing and it's an addition to the previous well not to the charger but to the other Screen protector thingy majora. This is. Oh, these are tempered ones. Okay. Now, well, at least they are not broken. But I'm wondering how long they are going to last. What the hell is this? It's some kind of a liquid. I've never seen this before. Is this the liquid they use to apply it to your phone? I guess it is. Or is this glue? <laughs> I hope not it's glue. Because otherwise I won't be able to get the screen protector off anymore. Okay, cool. So, tempered glass. Oh, they included three of these. Did they? No, they included only two pairs of wipes. But again, same wipes as the other one. These are slightly bigger, however. As if we compare it to the, the ones that came with the camera lens, these are slightly bigger. Professional, professional screen cleaning paper. Well, to be fair, you don't tend to clean screens with paper because it causes scratches. Okay, okay, oh, I know, I know. So, on to the last one. Things are going pretty quick today. So let's open this. And yeah, I know, all, I already know what's inside of here. And, oh. It's an addition for something you saw on this mill back previously. Something that you might have been expecting because I'm not going to solder it directly to the cigarette lighter adapter oh it also includes an on off switch for the charger cool so yeah a cigarette lighter now I assume that there's a fuse inside of here and there is this is a 250 volt fuse. I assume that this is 3 amps. F3AL250V. So this is a 3 amp fuse. I'm not sure what the laptop is capable of drawing. I think that it isn't really going to draw 3 amps or even more because of how old the laptop is. It takes quite a while to charge. I think it uses around two. Which is important because if the output on this charger is three amps, then the input amperage is higher. Because it isn't just creating free energy, of course. It, the energy needs to come from somewhere. 
So yeah, so this is going to be soldered together so that we've got a, uh, a portable car laptop charger which is going to be really neat and I think I'll be soldering them together with those heat shrink auto soldering heat shrinks so we can actually do that right now I guess that I also need to order a few of these as well so let's plug in my reflow station because these are done these are finished these are uh, finito so these fit nicely on these wires oh, this is a little bit too tight but I think that it should fit nicely yes oh, this is really nice this should give a really good fit which is excellent so let's uh, solder them together with the reflow station quite magical to see this happen actually so these work perfectly I've used these to actually repair some wires of my car and I prefer these because these also create a watertight fit uh, because the little rings that, in, that are inside of these heat shrinks they crimp down and then the heat shrink actually crimps so you know you got the idea everything crimps down so everything is watertight alright so that's all soldered in place nicely so that's all soldered in place rather nicely oh this is I think that this has jumped out of the solder of the heat shrink while soldering hmm. oh well so let's wait for this to cool down oh yeah it has started to leak well, that isn't such a big of a problem because I won't really be using this in any water, watery substance or something I'm just going to use this inside of a car so as long as they are connected which I assume they are we should be fine so let's actually test this So, grab the Mala multimeter, set up the lap bench, yeah something's rattling, so, Please do ignore, I think I fixed it. So we're going to set the input to 14 volts. Since we do need to be sure that it survives that actually. Because usually when a car battery is properly charged it will sit at around 14 volts, 14 to 14.1. Volts. So let's see what the output is so it's on really neat feature that you can turn it on and off with a push of a button on the top of the cigarette lighter so let's see zero ah Nineteen dot sixteen volts. That's uh, quite good actually. So, is there an indicator on here? Oh, there is a little LED. Oh wow, that's really neat. 
So there's quite a big capacitor inside of this plug, I assume, because it really... What the fuck? What the actual fuck is this? If I turn it off, there's a load of 4.7 amps going through the wires. What the actual... Huh? What is happening? Is it shorting the positive and the negative wires or something? I'm glad I tested this. Yeah, oh, come on. You can't just short the positive and negative wires once it's off. I mean... Yeah, it's the capacitor that's charging, I assume. People are going to do this when with the cigarette lighter inside of their cars. Inside of the... You know, inside of the, uh, the, the cigarette lighter socket. So, you can't just short these things out. So, yeah, we're going to open it. Because I want to get rid of that. Because if I accidentally turn it off, you know, when the laptop's, laptop's fully charged or something, then this thing goes into short circuit mode. What? They've designed a screw inside of the housing. And that's embedded in the plastic housing. So it looks like there's a screw. But if you try to open it, you basically ruin everything. What the fuck is this thing, man? Can I open it like this? I hope I can. Because I'm going to open it. I'll glue it back together if it breaks. I mean, why would you short out the positive and negative once you turn this thing off? What is even inside of this thing? So. Ah, there you go. Just clicked. Ah. I think I know why. The wire was touching one of the other leads. And I think that caused a short to actually happen. So now it shouldn't short anymore, I assume. But there isn't any capacitor inside of here, so I'm not sure why the LED is just fading off. There you go. So, yeah, it was just a wire touching the connection of the, the switch so oh, wow. that's unbelievable if I didn't test it on the bench then I would have most certainly ruined our trip with a car that isn't doing anything look there is no screw there's a screw head inside of there, but there is no screw. And there is a little thing for a screw to actually go into, but it isn't there. Which is really strange, but oh well. So let's put this back together. 
let's put the fuse back in with the little head and let's perform another test of this thing because we should not see any current flow when it's off at this at this point so let's check it so plus or minus so it's off it's on now so let's measure the voltage I'm going to do it in reverse I mean oh well let's just not do it in reverse then 19 volts and let's turn it off yeah that fixed it wow so the leads of the output wires were just touching how simple can it be well as I said I'm glad I tried it because otherwise we would have had a, a very bad trip and possibly a car battery dying on us so and it's already a brand new car battery so so I'm going to solder a connection to this to these output wires and that should actually uh, make this thing charge the car I'm hoping that it isn't an active charger I assume it isn't because it's a very old laptop so but then again you never know so yeah that's actually it for this post bag I hope you enjoyed this post back and I'll be back with a very special post back in the near future. So you might want to keep an eye on my channel in order to not miss out on this rather epic post back that's coming up. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this little post back with full of experiments and all kind of other stuff. So thanks again for watching and I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye!